I have an absolute hatred of being tracked on the internet. My privacy is my business and I want to keep it that way. I don't want everyone knowing what I'm looking at. Now, unfortunately, most people just see a completely opposite way of I'm doing nothing illegal. Why should I care? But my argument is, well, at the moment you're just seeing targeted advertising used for your details. Okay, that's not the worst thing ever. But what if in the future that information gets sent to the police or government? Again, you could say, I'm not doing anything illegal. But okay, what if that information was sent to insurance companies, but you just happen to be looking at some sort of medical issue on the internet? I don't know, something like you've got an itchy foot. So along with getting adverts for foot cream, now your medical insurance has more than doubled or trebled in price. Well, worst case, maybe it's not just foot cream you're looking at. What if you're looking at information on heart attacks? Well, a life insurance company might be interested in that information, thinking you're about to keel over tomorrow, and they're just going to wipe your insurance and say, nope, not insuring you anymore. And your family is really bad off there, aren't they? Um, these sort of things could happen. Anyway, I've been working on this free open source application here called NoTrack. The code is available here on GitHub. It is a network-wide DNS server which blocks trackers. And I've built it out of my own list here of just pretty much going around various websites, playing a game of whack-a-mole, seeing what they do and don't need. And I've built up a list of oh, eight and a half thousand trackers. And not many of these are actually known about. So if you look at likes of Easy List, you'll see quite a lot of these do not appear on there. Interesting. But I've also taken my list further and block in certain top-level domains. And that is for the purpose of trying to avoid malware, because some of them are really bad. Uh, it's just this short list here I've got. Uh, domains on these websites are free to register, and they tend to be pretty poor quality websites you're going to find there. This is all part of NoTrack here. It's this nice web interface I've built, or I'm sort of working on, really. <laughs> it's coming along nicely. This is a view of the tracker list. Uh, at the moment, we're only searching through letter, but uh, functionality of the future, I will be adding a better search feature here and the ability to customize it. Got domain status of what, I'm not gonna say what you've looked at, what your systems have looked at, because what your systems have done and what you have done can be two different things. Because I've barely used the internet today, I've been at work for 12 hours, yet uh, all these things have happened. I've highlighted which websites have been blocked and the reason why. Now you see here there's a couple of websites that are well, similarly named, but different subdomains at the end. The way I've built my list, I'm just flat out blocking that whole domain. Anything on that website ain't coming down on my network. Now, we find a lot of these ad blockers happen to create the whole domain, the whole subdomains as well. So it's got srsimcd.com, and then another line would be gvsimcd.com. This is the same principle as the etc host file works. You need the whole subdomains to be correct for the websites to be blocked. And it's also a great way for ad and tracker companies to get around it. They think, oh, I'll just create another subdomain and that throws off all the trackers and ad sites. Ain't throwing off mine. They literally have to create a whole new website to be able to get around it. Anyway, that all sounds very technical, but the way it is, my list is pretty short, but very efficient. I've also added easy links to Google and Whois. So let me just pick one of these. Uh, mirrorservice.org, that's going to be something Linux repository, isn't it? Uh, yeah, probably. Can't remember off the top of my head, but it's something like that. So I get who is the who is as well. When it wants to open. Ah, there we go. So yeah, all that information readily available. So what do I get if I try going to a tracker website? Let's try one. So if I go to scorecardresearch.com, the page is completely blank. Hmm, gee, I wonder why. Well, my tracker is done. It's redirected the request to a web server running on the device. And the web server has just returned a blank one pixel GIF image. Let's see here, if I go and ping the website, ping scorecardresearch.com, the IP returned is 192.168. That is my local area network and 62.2 is the IP of the device. So rather than sync holding all these requests and just making the browser hang around, I'm actually returning something. The web browser is free to carry on quite quickly because it's got something back, it just loads the next thing. And you find pages actually do load really quickly, and I find they do load slightly quicker than uBlock manage. 
So if you want to try out NoTrack, you can either set it up in a virtual machine or on a Raspberry Pi. It's only working for Ubuntu and Debian based distros at the moment. In the future, I will be expanding it for working on other distros. Um, actually, most of that part is written, but I don't know how all the various package managers work. So there's a bit of gaps in my code that need filling. So <laughs> would be useful if some people know how to contribute to those parts. It's all built on Bash scripting and PHP. Those are the languages I'm a bit more familiar with. Yeah, it's getting there. And uh, so that was a quick introduction of NoTrack. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.